I think the change of the date was more for your benefit than mine, because I know next week you guys have lots of things going on, but come to find out you have lots of things going on this week as well, so I do appreciate the change. Um, one reason I wanted to make sure we did this one before next week is because it is the vocabulary. I think that whoever you are, whatever you teach, this is one thing that you can do very well with your students. So we're still doing building background, but we're specifically going to be talking about the vocabulary part of that component today. So very quickly, what are we going to do today? Um, I'm going to have you identify different ways to select and emphasize key vocabulary. A lot of times as teachers, we just choose those bold, highlighted words in the text. Sometimes those aren't always the ones that we need to emphasize, so we're going to kind of look at that today. Um, I'm going to have you write some key vocabulary words for a specific topic, and then we're going to identify and discuss various vocabulary techniques that you can use in your classroom. So the very first part, we're going to move right into key vocabulary and, and looking at some vocabulary. Now, I chose a very generic topic for us to work with, um, so hopefully you have some background. Hopefully you studied about butterflies when um, you were in elementary middle school. So what I'd like you to do is on your tables, there is a baggie with some blue cards. A baggie with blue cards. Don't worry about the green ones right now, but a baggie with blue cards. What I'd like you to do is take out those words, and as a group, I'd like you to look at the words, and then I'd like you to go ahead and try to categorize them. You get to decide. So talk amongst yourselves, and decide how do you think you might group these words, okay? Work together in a classroom observation this morning. Have they got caterpillar larva? Second, then I feel like that's almost like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just four of them. What comes first, the people or the water? Yeah. <laughs> larva. My prior knowledge is on really? Is a larva? No. She said the larva comes first. <laughs> Finally, an intelligent group. Here we go. Boucher, no doubt. <laughs> I like your setup. I don't know where to document that. That's so weird. It won't be changed. It's a verb. Oh, That's a That's a word. Well, it's part of our friend. Uh, uh, so cycle and and change could be from one to the next. The stages. What's next? Record? Record? So you can have what happens first, first. Yes. Actually, second, it'll be in there. First, in that power part for just it. Then, or first, second, next. So these could be the stages. Ordinal or sequencing words. Okay, okay. And so why are these words together? Um, those are primarily verbs, except for the word observation, but they, they, they connotate when, when you're going to experiment things that you may need to do in observation, sort of change or documents, or actions. 
And so how did you categorize these sets of words then? They were just what was left over. Believe the life cycle of the butterfly. Okay, so it had to deal with the process of the change of the butterfly. The change. Yes, that's what I was just like. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so why do you put those all in my Okay, um, what about these? Stages, okay, what about those words? Not sure? Okay, those are your others that you're not sure about, okay? And what about these then? The actions. Okay, so the things that they may have to do. Okay, good. <laughs> so are these all together? <laughs> that works. That's okay. There's there's no right. This is you all trying to decide. So, but most everybody's kind of getting the same grouping of words. So very good. This is the table. The table with all the answers, right? We, we cracked about the code. You cracked the code? <laughs> and okay. it's a cycle. A cycle of life. Let's go with that. Where do the wings go? Yeah, why not? Where does the wings go? Okay. Butterflies have wings. Yeah, no one else has wings. Of course, it could be under the butterfly phase. Unless your observer's a bird. What about the circle up there? The cycle at the top. Yeah, I was thinking the circle should go up to the top. Okay, so that's what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. Okay. Looks good. Excellent. Grab that chair at the end of the table. Put it by Dr. Paul. I'm trying to go around to each group and have the conversation with each group and about how they're doing the day in and day out, and most of the time do not need to be taught. However, if you have newcomers or beginner EL students in your classrooms, which I know a lot of you do, some of these tier, two, tier one words will have to be taught. So if you look, um, butterflies would be considered a tier one word. So think about your list and where you put it and identifying that it may have to be a word that you actually have to teach to low-level EL students, okay? It's those common words. And tier two are your academic words. These are the words that you use in your classroom that are needed to make understanding of the content. And if you look, connection, demonstration, accurate, estimate, those are hard academic words that a lot of students don't understand, and they are cross-curricular. You hear some of those in math, as well as in ELA, as well as, as in your history classes. And the third tier of vocabulary words are those specialized words that you may only see in a specific type of text, and maybe not very often. Um, so here is a spectrometer, a bayonet, you're not going to see that in multiple places. You're going to find that in a very specific text. So the three tiers of vocabulary. You also need to look at process and function words. And I, I was very happy because most of your groups, you did identify what the process or function words were in your sorting activity. But it's those things that are related to language, classroom processes, and tasks how um, they're going to use transition words, because most of you all did group your transition words together. 
Also looking at words and word parts. Um, you all have to help me. What are some maybe word parts in the math area that you may have to teach? Polly, to help me because I'm not always. Polly, very good. Knowing what that what that means and how that connects to other aspects of math. What about in the computer area? What are some maybe word parts? Very good. Um, music. Music, any maybe word parts that may need to be taught? Neo. Neo, okay. Anything else? Thinking about that now, do you pay attention to that and do you bring that to students' attention, those word parts? If not, that is a really key part. Like here, we, I use an example of cycle. You've got it in bicycle, recycle. So using those word parts and making sure you teach and what, what, um, Prefix or suffix can be added to that to make the meaning change to the word. And this one, which is a very big challenge for EL students, are those multiple meaning words. Words that have more than one meaning and knowing the difference between it. Because you can use a, you can use a table in math and it has a very much different meaning than if you were sitting in, um, like, okay, there's not home math anymore, but that's... When I was going to school, we still had homework. Root. Science, it may be the root of a plant or flower, but in math, it may be the square root of something. So it's much different. So making sure they know those different meanings to the words. So based on this new information, and I did um, give everybody a copy of the PowerPoint, the first, um, the first page and the back side is from the first part, and then it starts in the second part. So based on this new information, what I'd like you to do is now take the baggie that has the green cards in it. No, don't put away the blue ones yet. Take out the green cards, and they are now how I would actually like you to sort the words on your table. <coughs> so you should have content words, which are tier three words. You should have academic words, which are tier two, and those process function words. Words that teach English structure and the common tier one words. So lay out the green cards, and now as a group, resort them based on the new categories. <laughs> but it's also a content word for getting No, no, no. Well, like, especially, like, in the structure. Like, in the high I mean, that one. Yeah, it can be nouns. Yeah, right. It's just simple language words. Yeah. 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 Right? We have to think about, like, these would be words that you wouldn't really teach to regular students, but you're going to teach to your EL students. Circle? Yeah? Right? <laughs> Circle? I don't know. I mean, it depends on what you're The only thing about. I think about, though, is process and function words. So that would be, I guess, the document. Yeah. Like, for yeah. observation. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 Yes. That adult or caterpillar. Probably all of those come over here to And these, these structure words for second, next, then finally. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to move. Sorry. I'm going to move on. Tier one or well, I just don't want you looking at Sim it. Simplistic. What is that? What A? Yeah. Well, it depends. Because can, can it have different meanings based on the context in which it's used? In this situation, is it going to be like an, uh, 
Yeah, exactly. So kind of knowing that there's a little bit of a difference there, but we'll have that discussion. Tier one is the lowest Ones that, yes, that they may use in day-to-day -day language. I think that Yes. And did, was it, was it not? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we have the answers right there. Thank you, thank you. The one person. Can I have that one there? Look, 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 look. I know, I'll put it back over there. <laughs> you want to say that? Uh, yeah. So there's an yeah. academic board here about more of those. Observe observation. Uh, yeah. I need yes. adults from you. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying you're like, first, like, yeah. 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 I know, because I just think this is such a process and function word. Like, observe is like pretty, you know. Yeah. Because cycle is it. Cycle is definitely a root. I think that's what. Because um, then you can kind of do like. Because if it was just like, if it was just like, sir, that'd be a different word. That'd be a different story. I guess just, but I think you can't really say like, kind of observe. Welcome, Mr. Brown. Welcome. <laughs> Great. I know that's what happens when I give you the PowerPoint. Do you understand why it's that way? Okay. So you were leaning in that direction. I lean. It has to go together with the That makes it Yes, it is, exactly. And so and that's why if I had chosen a math topic, I would have definitely been way off because I don't know all of that. But I figured this is something that you all everybody should have learned about butterfly and had some background information. But this is this is also leading into why we have to really look at what vocabulary we are teaching. And because a lot of these words we probably would not really emphasize. We just assume kids know these words. We would probably definitely teach these words and these words, but would we actually talk about the cycle? Would we really go into depth and make connections in other places? So it's really trying to have this narrow down and looking at what we're talking about. Okay, so we're Okay, let's check. I know most of you have already found the, the answers in your PowerPoint, but that's okay. So let's take a look at your content words tier three. This is where you would have monarch, a, larva, caterpillar, pupa, and adult. Why do you think those are content words? Why would they fall in tier three? Yes, ma'am. Because you need to talk about their meaning specific to the content that you're teaching about larva. Very good. It is very specific. We have a discussion back there about a. That is a common word. It is a common word, but in the context of butterflies, it has some very specific things that it needs to be known about this cycle of butterflies. Okay, cross academic words, tier one, and process function words. Here you have observe, observation, record, and all your sequencing words. Okay? Words that teach English structure, you have cycle. Because you can add that, connect that to other ways to use cycle. And then your common words, those tier one words, butterfly, wings, change, circle. In some respect, they should have used these words in other areas. Most students, butterfly, they will know that over the monarch butterfly. Okay, and they'll have seen wings, change, and circle. Now, this is a little bit of a different way to actually look at your vocabulary. Thumbs up if you would actually teach these words in your classroom, if this was something you were going to do. Would you actually make sure you teach the process words? Thumbs up if you would. Now you would. Some maybe, okay. Now, thumbs up if you would definitely go about teaching these words. 
Some of you, yes. Remember, these definitely have to be taught if you have beginners or newcomer students in your classroom. How many of you would definitely teach these content words? Thumbs up, yes, definitely. And this is where we spend most of our time is with those content words. So now what I'd like you to do is the next handout is handout 26. Just a comment yes. on, on um, the circle in math. Mm -hmm. We would teach it because we would teach it, in, you know, we would give a much more specific definition now, equidistant from the center. Um, and they probably wouldn't look at it in those terms. They're just thinking. Yes. Hey. Right. And that's why at that point it fell under common. If it was in your math class, it would fall under content, okay. which would make that shift, that change. They might know it as a very common word, but as you're teaching it in your classroom, it would be a content word instead. So looking at handout 26, what I would like you to do is I would like you to think of a topic that you're going to be teaching between now and the end of this month, okay? So think about what topic it is you might be teaching. And I want you to write it on that line for me, please. Can you write? Now what I'd like you to do, this a handout is broken down into tier one words, tier two words, tier three, and other, those function words or process words. What I would like you to do right now is I would definitely like to have one word at least in every box. A tier one word, a tier two word, a tier three word, and the others. If you need to write more than that, you can. So I'd like you to think about that topic and what words you would need to teach. I am guaranteed your content words will come very easily for you because that's what you concentrate on the most. But think about what academic words like identify, select that you might use and what common words might you need to teach before you go to those content words. Don't let me down, Gooch. Okay. I really can't see your hands in the way. And, and you don't have to have like a hundred, but definitely have a couple listed that you know. Excuse me, Gooch. <laughs> Equation. 
because it is more specific also to your content area. Now it should be common because if you've been and using it, it McIntyre progress. Okay, what, what's the word? Should I like function yeah. or slow or okay. why? Okay, yeah. okay. Ooh, looky there. Mm -hmm. All right, let me finish this word. Mm -hmm. Better, better. That's Thank better. you. Mm -hmm. Lisa McIntyre, Algebra 1, Overton High School. <laughs> yes, do you have any, any other word parts or things that... Oh, you're doing that. He's good, Matrix. Yeah. Um, we also talked about the word, just the number. It's a number. You may not know. <laughs> oh. Hey. Yes, you are. Yeah. Can we read that? <laughs> yes. I would try to get that on this, but I don't know if we can read what we got. That, hey, that's okay. Okay, good. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> this could also be this. It depends, especially if you have students who have those at home. That's true. It's a common word. For some students who may not have that at the home, then it, it wouldn't be considered this. So kind of knowing. It's a two-way word. It's what a word? Two -way word? Computer. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is I would like you to put a star by the ones you already, because I know this is not your first year teaching this, okay? Or I hope it's not, or if it is, it's okay, but most of you I know have been here a while, so this is not new content for you. So put a star by the ones you already teach when you teach this topic. So for example, if you know you already teach line or slope, when you teach this topic, then put a star by it. Topic, which words, like if you if you transferred yourself back to last year and you talked about one, pretty good, Gabe. Yeah, Maybe as part of my role. <laughs> 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 yes, exactly. Maybe two. Yes. Maybe this is part of my role. I even do columns. <laughs> <laughs> I even do the columns <laughs> where I show a building. <laughs> do what? So I even do, Someday. I actually show them a visual for columns. Oh, nice. So I've got a picture of a building. You got, you got a lot of hard work. And show the arrows for the columns. Well, that like Look at you. I went and got a stadium picture. And showed the seat. An exemption. I've actually taught Exemplar teacher, so take a gauge. AKA numeracy. Do your job How do you find your address? Is that how everybody has the address? How do you find yours? Anything else you'd like to say, Miss Gooch? Miss Gooch. Anything? <laughs> ah. Seems you've lost one from your group. I think he like went to the bathroom. He's not going back. To the bathroom. What you got, Mr. Buck? Um, Most of it that you already teach, huh? A few not. Yeah, in this section. Yeah, we kind of collaborated a little bit because we're well, we're kind of teaching the same stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it might be, but I'm going to suspect for your content, it's not going to be common to that situation. They might know that to repeat that the activity might be common, but how they repeat within the context of your content will not, they will not know that. Okay, now, circle the words you did not star. Circle the words you did not star. Circle the words you did not star. My charge for you is as you get ready to teach this topic, this subject, those words that you circled, 
you emphasize in the teaching of your vocabulary. Because obviously you thought those words were important because you listed them to teaching that topic. You haven't taught them prior. So my charge for you is the ones that you circled, you make sure that you also teach those when you teach those other key vocabulary words that you think are important, okay? So when you get ready to teach that topic, I would like you to also incorporate those ones that you circled, okay? Now I'd like to pose some questions just for you to think about, no responses. How was this experience different from the way you usually select your vocabulary? Think about that. This is how you would normally do it. Is it different? How is it different? What types of words were easy to identify for you? And what types of words were more challenging to identify? And I'm going to probably suspect the ones that you starred were those easy ones because you know that. And those challenging ones were possibly those ones you circled that you don't normally pay more attention to. So just some thinking um, spots there for you all to think about. So very quickly, did we identify different ways to select and emphasize vocabulary? Yes, I believe we did. And did you write key vocabulary words for a specific topic? Yes. So the next thing I want to look at is vocabulary technique. And your next handout um, is actually a handout that has several vocabulary technique, techniques on it. And um, this, this is, I believe vocabulary is the one thing that we can all do no matter what we teach and no matter who we have in our classrooms. And a lot of times when teachers are struggling with ELs, I tell them if you don't do anything else, you concentrate on building their vocabulary. Because if they have a vocabulary that they can draw from, it helps with comprehension. It allows them to become part of the learning in your classroom. So on um, this sheet of paper, there are lots, well, there are 10 different vocabulary, it says techniques, I call them strategies. Um, so if you want to I would mark out techniques and write strategies, but you, you don't have to. But uh, there are a few on here that I want to highlight specifically, and then I also brought some examples that are on the back table. And yes, I have been furiously creating examples across content areas. So like you all as math, there's examples for math back there. There's examples for um, not as much like computers and things like that. I apologize. My brain can only take in so much information to output and music in those areas. But the core content areas, I try to create examples of the vocabulary activities. Um, but I definitely, number three on here, personal dictionaries. Um, I would definitely, I know this is a stretch for high schools, but kids having composition books or spirals and then keeping up with a running vocabulary for the content. So like you guys created all these vocabulary words for this topic, those kids should have all of that in one spot and keep a running record of those. Um, word walls are good, but word walls are only as good as if you use them. Words on a wall are just words on a wall. Words taken off the wall and used and put back on the wall are good word walls, okay? Um, the concept definition maps, um, there's examples back there, but it's where you have um, a topic and you tell me what it is, um, what is it like, and some examples of it, which is really good. The word sorts is what I had you guys do today. Um, and there's various levels of word sorting. You have the word and picture and definition. You can just have word and definition. There's various things to do there. Um, the four corners vocabulary activity, I have examples of it in the back. It's just simply on an index card and you do a picture, the word, a definition, and how it might be used. For math, it might be a practical application. Where might they see that word used around them? 
So there's a little bit of a variation there. Um, so what I'd like you, us to do in the last few minutes is I'd like you all to get up and go back and look at the different examples of the vocabulary strategies. I'm going to give us about five minutes for everybody to go look, and then we'll come back and um, close up the session. And if you have questions about them, I'll be more than glad to answer them for you. He may become famous in this video. Great. Yeah. 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 Does anybody have any questions? And you can hole punch and put them on a ring and you can put them on a Because they may get lost if you just have one or two. So I always hole punch and kept them on a ring. And then they can um, put that ring around their, in their three ring binder and hook it and it will do it. Yes. Uh, you write on your note pages. I need one from A to C. I don't know if you're only two or two. Yeah, they do. They do a good job. I know what. This is good for every single video, but it's also good for kids. Finish early on something and, and, do something. and they do this for everybody else. Where it's in a, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a station that people can go to after they're finished with something and then go back for a review for a station. Oh my goodness. I got one for Miller. Definition. And then this is the Okay, so very quickly, review 
reviewing this objective, did we identify and discuss various vocabulary techniques? Yes, we talked about some, and then I also brought some examples for you. So to finish up today, we've done all this, um, you will not see me again until next year. That sounds really weird. But on January 23rd is when I will be back. And we will, at that point, be moving on to component three, which is comprehensible input. So what are you to do between now and then? Well, you chose a topic that you're going to be teaching upcoming. My encouragement is those words that you have circled, you teach to your students as well. So that is your assignment from now until I come back in January is those words that you circle, you actually teach to your students when you teach that topic, okay? And then we'll have some reflection about that when we come back in January, which I know is a long span of time. So I will definitely make sure I send a reminder and have Deanna send it out to you all kind of to help use as a reminder. Um, so if you will just take a few minutes and do the reflective thought sheet that's at the, the very last handout, and then on your way out the door, the yellow reflective thoughts folder is here. If you haven't already put the blue cards back